Today I'm making squash tots and cheese sauce with these amazing ingredients that I got from this urban farm. As a chef and a farmer, you're creating a recipe. One's a recipe for growing food and the other one's a recipe for cooking the food. Join me as I take the best of urban farms and cook it up right in my food truck. Welcome to the Downtown Farmer. I'm your chef, L'Oreal Gavin. I'm your farmer and your fish farmer, Adam Navini. All right, so everybody knows tater tots, but I've got a new one for you, squash tots. I fell in love with squash all over again recently when I got to pick them myself at this urban farm. I'm gonna show you how a basic ingredient is gonna make you fall in love again. Let's get the party started. So I've roasted this butternut squash in an oven, 350 degrees for one hour. All you gotta do is cut it in half and forget about it. Isn't that awesome? Hello, delicious calling. This smells so amazing. But we're gonna take these seeds out real quick. Give a little scrapey scrape out of here. Look how after I've cooked it, it's literally just falling right off of the skin. So I've got my mix here, and then we're gonna add some binders to it. So I'm gonna add a half a cup of breadcrumbs. You don't want too much, but it's gonna help bind together when we add one egg here in just a second. I've got my fryer oil going. It's at 350 degrees, so we're good to go. I'm gonna show you how to get that iconic squash tot shape. With a piece of wax paper, you'll evenly distribute the squash tot mixture. You'll roll it up, pinch the sides, and then set it in the freezer until it's firm, which usually takes one to two hours. Aquaponics is aquaculture, which is the farming of fish, and hydroponics, which is the growing of plants. We take the two sciences and put them together, the aquaculture and the hydroponics, and we make aquaponics. So it's the most efficient farming method in the world. Each greenhouse has a fish pond connected to it, and so the water comes up, goes through a couple filters, and then it runs into the, the gravel beds. So it's about a little ecosystem, it's all about sustainability. It's about fish sustaining the plants and the plants sustaining the fish. Okay, so we're gonna make one of my favorite sauces in the entire world, a cheese sauce. Cheese. So you definitely need a nice cheese. Right here, I've got a yellow sharp cheddar, which is super delicious. So in order to make a cheese sauce, you gotta know how to make a roux first. A roux is a thickening agent that aids body in any sauce. 50% oil and 50% flour. So in this case, I'm gonna use butter. Go ahead and get your saucepan warmed up. We're going on medium heat right here. Butter, butter, butter. I'm gonna add that right into my pan. Delicious. We're gonna add in our flour. I'm gonna sift it around just a little bit. You wanna have like medium heat when this happens. This is the part that's really important. You've gotta start smashing it down and getting all of those little lumps out of there, all right? We got a little brown roux in the house. I really like the flavor of adding beer to this cheese sauce because it adds a little hoppy pop. So next, what we're gonna do is add our heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna whisk a little bit at a time, and we've actually taken it off the heat because you don't wanna curdle or burn your sauce. And then after this sauce gets really nice and thick, we're gonna add our sharp cheddar. So I'm going to grate a couple cups of it, add the cheese. I really love adding rosemary to this cheese sauce because I find that the woodsiness of it really complements the hoppiness of the beer that I added. While that's cooking down and melting, I'm gonna go ahead and roll my squash tots into my Japanese breadcrumbs. We don't need too much here, just enough to coat it. Look, gotten our squash tots nice and covered. Yeah. There's a term in the culinary world known as nappe, which means that a sauce is its perfect texture. So you'll know that it's nappe if you go like this. If that line stays right there, then you know you have the perfect sauce texture. So carefully set your squash tots down in the basket. Very gently put the fried item into the fryer oil. If you're frying anything at home, please proceed with caution. Frying is very dangerous. If a fire starts from fryer oil, do not put water on it, put flour on it. And they're actually gonna tell you when they're done. You don't have to worry about it because they're gonna float to the surface and they're gonna be a beautiful golden brown. The cool thing about butternut squash too when you're growing it is that it's more resilient to like pests and bugs and stuff like that. Where something like the zucchinis and things kind of get, they get, they get beat up a little bit more. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I like growing butternut squash. That's what's a great vegetable too. So whenever you take anything out of the fryer oil, you wanna make sure that you let the residual fryer oil have a chance to fall off of whatever you're cooking. So go ahead and let it sit out for just a second. Anything that you pull out of the fryer, add just a little bit more salt to, and then we're gonna plate these up. They're crispy and crunchy and creamy all at the same time, and that's how you do that. When I have some fresh herbs, sometimes I'll just take a really sharp pair of kitchen shears. I picked those chives right from the garden too. They have such a nice flavor. It's basically like a nice subtle green garlic flavor. So last but not least, I'm gonna put a little bit of hot sauce on here because wet cheese is complete without a little spicy. Order's up.
Whew, look at these squash tots and cheese sauce. Delicious, straight from the farm, right to the food truck. Ask me any questions. I can't wait to answer them for you. And most importantly, subscribe and like. I'm Chef Florio Gavin. Thanks for watching.